BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 Biology Brain Chemicals. So, Parkinson's disease. Uh, a lot of old people suffer from this. Uh, you don't have to be old. Some young people suffer from it as well. Uh, you might know Michael J. Fox, a very famous actor, suffers from Parkinson's disease. What are the symptoms? Muscle tremors, shakes, uh, stiff muscles, slow movement, poor balance, walking problems, difficulty with speech and breathing, and depression. Okay, and these are symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Be able to say what three or four of them are. So what causes Parkinson's disease? Well, the problem is uh, dopamine. Now, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. Uh, in the last video, we talked about synapses. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter uh, and it is active. It does its job in the frontal cortex, the brain stem and the spinal cord, kind of around the brain. And it's involved in the control of movement and emotional responses. So if it's not doing its job properly, then that can affect your ability to control your muscles and it can also affect your emotions as well. Okay. Now what may happen is that the neurons that produce it may die. So you don't have enough dopamine and this results in reduced dopamine levels in the brain and that can cause Parkinson's disease. So how do we treat Parkinson's disease? Well, you need to increase the amount of dopamine in the brain, increase dopamine levels in the brain. The problem is though that you can't just give somebody dopamine because it can't be absorbed into the bloodstream. What you do though is you can give them a drug called L-DOPA and L-DOPA is a molecule that produces dopamine. So you give somebody L-DOPA and they L-DOPA produces dopamine molecules and that increases the level of dopamine in the brain. Another disease, clinical depression. And I'm not just talking about feeling a bit sad. Clinical depression is a serious medical disease. Prolonged feelings of sadness, anxiety, loss of interest, insomnia. Now, what can cause clinical depression? Well, there's another neurotransmitter we need to know, serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter and it's linked to feelings of reward and pleasure. And if you have a lack of serotonin, that can cause depression. Remember, there's acetylcholine, there's dopamine and serotonin. Those are the three neurotransmitters that we need to know. And lack of serotonin can cause depression. So how do you treat it? Now, remember that when serotonin has done its job, then basically it, we should get rid of it from the synaptic cleft. It is either reabsorbed or it's broken down by enzymes or it diffuses away. Now, what you can do is you can stop it from being reabsorbed, okay, using something called an SSRI. It's a serotonin selective reabsorption inhibitor. Learn that, an SSRI. And it basically stops the serotonin from being reabsorbed. And that means that you have lots of serotonin in your synaptic clefts all of the time. So this maintains a high level of serotonin in the synaptic gap. And that's a good treatment for depression. Okay, an example of an SSRI you may have heard of is Prozac. Prozac is used to, to treat depression. Now it can be abused, obviously. I mean, if you imagine if you take uh, an SSRI, then you've got lots of serotonin in your synaptic clefts all the time and it can make you feel very happy. There's a drug called MDMA, uh, better known as ecstasy, and that does the same thing. It's an SSRI. 
So it results in a high concentration of serotonin in the synapse and you get a prolonged feeling of well-being. Everybody's your friend. Okay, so drugs, recreational drugs, can interfere with the function of neurotransmitters. Here's a summary you should learn. How drugs can interfere with normal synapse function. Okay, it can affect the synthesis or storage of a neurotransmitter. It can affect the release of a neurotransmitter. It can affect the function of the receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. It may prevent the reuptake of neurotransmitters, which is what an SSRI does. It may inhibit the enzymes that break down the neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft. So lots of ways that drugs can interfere. We may be talking recreational drugs, or we may be talking things like pesticides as well. If you mess with the, the way the synapses of certain insects work, it can kill them. So pesticides as well. Here are some questions you should definitely be able to do. What causes Parkinson's disease? What are its symptoms? How can it be treated? What causes clinical depression? What are its symptoms? How can it be treated? And then outline the ways that drugs can interfere with normal synapse function. And I've seen kind of comprehension exercises to do with things like pesticides, you know, so learn that list.